Let's take a look at our top level MakerBot assembly. There is a full history with this item. Here we can see a history on the entire assembly and where it currently is. We can also look at the revision history. These are the actual previous revision. If you want to open that up and take a look at it, it's right there. It is a full usable revision of that product, so we can take a look at that and look at revision A as well. This is the original one that was released at A, but is currently under change for revision B. You can see down at the bottom here, we saw an example of a bill of material before. This is an example of being able to view that bill of material. Here you can see I can turn the red lining on or off. Because this thing is under change, and is in a preliminary state, I could actually view the bomb with an eye to what is different, what is being modified to get from A to B. Going across the tabs just for a sec, we do have the ability to look at the complete indented bill of material. There is no limit to the indent to the bill of material. And you can see here that this is a pretty deep assembly. Any documents attached are here. So these are the documents attached at this level. You can see that we've got a schematic, We've got images, also PowerPoint, Word, Excel. The CAD documents are important because chances are those came in automatically through our CAD connectors. So we have many connectors both for MCAD and ECAD, and we've published a schema so that everything comes in in the same way. So it doesn't matter what authoring tool somebody used. That's kind of not important to us, but what's important is what, how it finally lands. So the real benefits of using our connectors through our, you know, our connector products is that by using the author, is inside of their authoring tool, automatically was able to connect to Ares Innovator, put the actual native file, a viewable file, getting the thumbnail generated, also building bill and material structure as well as CAD structure, and again, being able to automate that process as much as possible to make it a simple process to do. Here we can see we have a cost. That cost is actually calculated based on the cost of the uh, items below. What you'll see is this is a calculated cost. What that means is we've actually done a cost roll-up, which we can see an example of a bomb costing report for this one. Here we have electronics as a major sub-assembly underneath our top-level assembly. And inside of this electronics assembly, you'll see that we have, again, we have the bomb, the bomb structure. And what I want to do is take a look at this replicator interface board. This particular assembly you know, did come from an ECAD integration. You can see that there's several items here. What we have is we can keep track of the reference designators. So what information for electrical CAD and engineers or ECAD interface, here we not only have the part, not only do we have the reference designators, but if I view the bill of material for that particular component, you'll actually see the locations for all those reference designators indicated here. But let's go take a look at um, one of our resistors. If I open this item up, what you see is that we have AML information on here. So the AML information is that this is a part that we buy. And because we buy it, that means that we have manufacturer part information about it. Something else I'm going to take a quick look at, if we look at the storage assembly. And again, I'll show you an example going from the indent to build material. If I expand that storage assembly, we'll see that one of the items that is there is software. So this is an item, a part number we're tracking, where we've got the software attached. When we manage software in Aris Innovator, typically what people are going to do is attach the software and manage it as a document. So you can see we have a, an item type of software, and attached to it is a document item or container. And there we'd see attached the actual, in this case, we have RAR files zip files, whatever the case may be, of the executables or the firmware. So from the same extruder, I'm going to do a structure browser. So we already saw it. there's a bill of material, there's an exploded bill of material, or um, indented bill of material. Here's a total structure browser, so being able to take a look at all the documents attached to different types of items. What we can also do here, the structure browser, is a comparison. So I can compare the extruder against a previous revision of itself or a totally different part number if I want. But in this case, I am going to pick just a previous rev. What this allows me to do, I, we saw an example of a red line bomb before. This is an example of a red line structure. So being able to see totally what's different all the way down to the type of the documents that are attached between the, the current revision and the older revision.